To understand quantum mechanics, we have to first understand how time is being created and the part we play in its creation. In quantum atom theory, the arrow of time is formed by the forward momentum of electromagnetic radiation from each individual atom. Just like ripples on a pond, each atom will radiate out light spheres of quantized wavefronts. Each expanding wavefront will create a probability of a future event. When a wavefront comes in contact with another atom, a photon or quantum of energy will be absorbed. This will create a new moment in time that will be part of Einstein's curvature of space-time. There will then be a quantum leap of energy, creating a new wave function of future probability. The uncertainty principle of quantum physics is the same probability that the observer will have with any future event. This is because the wave function of quantum physics represents the time continuum at the most fundamental level. We have the entanglement because the polarization will be set at the creation of each expanding wavefront. The wavefront will expand in the form of a light sphere and the polarization will remain the same for the entire surface of the light sphere no matter how large it becomes. Because light is electromagnetic radiation in the visible spectrum, this process is visible to us. In the double slit experiment, we can see light radiate out, striking objects, creating new moments of time. When the light reaches the screen with the two slits, the photon will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes going through both slits as two light spheres of quantized wavefronts. Constructive and destructive interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave particle function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse, creating moments of time and quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. At that moment in time, the interference pattern disappears, because to observe the photon, we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wavefront into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time, the interference pattern will reform. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state unless act acted upon by an external force. It is the outward momentum of electromagnetic radiation that creates the inward force of gravity. The radiating energy will be entirely absorbed proportionally to the masses within the objects. This will cause an unbalanced force and the two bodies will resonate together. There is no instantaneous action at a distance and the speed of the gravitational field is the speed of light. Because atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths, like X-rays, can penetrate the objects and therefore every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. When the atoms come together under their own gravity, their space-time will synchronize, distorting the geometry of space-time, creating time variations between and within objects. It is time variations within magnetic fields that act as a source for electric fields, and time varying electric fields is a source of the magnetic fields. When one field is changing in time, then a field of the other is induced. This will be relative to the position and the momentum of the objects creating the time variations, the atoms themselves. The greater the angle in space, the greater the curvature of space-time, the stronger the electromagnetic field at that point in space, 
and at that moment in time. The magnetic fields are always at right angles to the electric fields, forming the local space-time symmetry and geometry. The atoms will distort the geometry of space-time, creating mathematical patterns of every conceivable shape, from seashells to spiral galaxies. The same mechanism of symmetry breaking governs the whole universe of non-organic and organic matter. The forward momentum of electromagnetic radiation will place light charged particles that repel, becoming equally spaced along the curvature of space-time. This will give us a mathematical symmetry for the evolution of life from simple to complex. The geometry of space-time is an innate property of matter, whatever form or shape it takes. Each photon-electron coupling will create its own symmetry around its point in space-time. This can be observed either as a point in space over a period of time, or as an area of space at a moment in time, but not as both, therefore we have the measurement problem of quantum mechanics. This theory fits in with Einstein's theories on relativity, because the individual atoms create their own space-time geometry relative to their position and momentum, therefore there is no universal time. Because of this, the observer is at the centre of his own broken symmetry and can look back in time through light years of space in every direction. And the position of the observer within the universe makes no difference. Whatever planet or galaxy he observes from, he will see the universe expanding and be able to look back in time in all directions. Therefore, momentum itself is frame dependent and the observer as a group of atoms is the only true reference frame. We therefore live in a universe of mortal space-times, and each space-time is governed by the Lorentz contraction of time. The more a group of atoms accelerates towards the speed of light, the more they will distort the geometry of space-time, and the slower time will run, relative to an observer or group of atoms that are not accelerating. This is because an increase in energy, or mass, will increase the number of photon-electron couplings, and there is a delay factor for each photon-electron coupling. This is why light travels slower through glass, water, and a gravitational field. The accelerating object will distort the geometry of its own space-time. From the smallest atom to the entire electromagnetic spectrum, will have to contract for the laws of physics to remain the same. When this happens, time will slow down, because the forward momentum of electromagnetic radiation is continuously forming the future probability of the time continuum. Time is only relative to the wavelength of the object creating the space-time. Once again, this can be seen, because light of different colours have different wavelengths. Blue light has a shorter wavelength than red light, and therefore blue light is refracted more than red. The different colours will have different positions in space and time, therefore running, forming rainbows of colour. A rainbow is only relative to each individual observer, because each observer is creating their own space-time geometry. If we have two observers at different positions, they will both see the same rainbow in different positions of the sky at the same time. The best way to see this for yourself is to observe a rainbow from a moving car or train, the rainbow will also move, relative to your position and momentum. You might be thinking that this is just because all the angles are changing, and you will be right. But, the important thing is, that the different colours are moving relative to each other, and are not relative to anything else. This is because the colours represent the different wavelengths of the light itself, and the momentum of time is only relative to the wavelength of the object creating the space-time. Therefore we see a beauty of a broken symmetry. To put it very simply, time moves at the speed of light, and energy and mass slow it down to form their own space-time geometry. Because space-time is expanding at the same rate that light moves, the expansion of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because